You know, one general concept uh, you guys should keep in mind and go is the closer your, store, your stone is to the side, uh, the more interested you're saying, these are my points, this is my pie, right? The further away you play from the side, you're saying, yeah, I don't really care about this, I'm really interested in all this stuff. That's, I want to play out here, I want to think globally, I want to think big. So, we say that's a pretty nice balance point. This is slightly more, that's the direction, the phone shut off. Uh, this is a little more territory oriented, though you can still make this much bigger. This is very territory oriented. And this is it's kind of stupid. Don't this. This is saying, I just want that one point. You can't win one point, so that's too much. So right there is a nice point for balance. White does a very similar move. Takes that corner. Black will continue saying, hey, I'm still kind of interested in territory. Uh, another reason to play this move is that the 3-4 stones tend to make the game a little more complicated than if you played a 4-4 four, four stone. Right, so we play this 1-3-4, 1-3-4. You know, everybody has seen this move, right? You guys, you know, as whatever level you're at, maybe Robert doesn't know, I don't know how much go Robert's played. You're just going to smile and follow along there. <laughs> all right, you guys have all seen this move before. You all know what to do with this move. This one, if you haven't played that much go, this one's like, hey, uh, it's a little more confusing, right? You're not, it's not immediately obvious. And furthermore, the Joseki, the patterns that come from the stone, are actually more complicated, or at least can be more complicated. So. You know, I like to play this move against weaker players in particular because you know, they, they don't know all these Joseki as well. Right? This one's simple by comparison. All right, so anyway, uh, White approaches directly. What is weird about this? Didn't go to the corner. Didn't, Didn't go to the corner. corner. Why is that weird? Because we like corners. Because we like corners, right? In the beginning, we say that's the most important play on the board, right? It's the corners, the easiest place to defend. So white's giving up taking a corner to instead prevent black from getting a corner enclosure, right? What white doesn't want to have happen is something like this. White doesn't want to give black lots of points in the corners. This move is okay. It's a little confrontational. Uh, this was actually played a lot more uh, if we go back 100 years or so. Uh, it was actually much more uncommon to do this. Uh, today, it gets played every once in a while. Nothing wrong with it. You can do it if you want to provoke your opponent a little more if you're feeling a little frisky or something and you want to... We had just looked at the Shusaku. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yes, this is uh, possibly the start of Shusaku opening. Yeah. Or Black will then take this corner uh, and White will play something like this and fight everywhere simultaneously. It's great. Uh, so, but here's what's funny. White did this. And black... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not Shusaku opening, right? Shusaku would just play something like this over here. You know, take the corner, right? Corners should be the biggest. So White ignores that. The approach is high. Notice this is a high approach, right? We're approaching from the fourth line. Over here, we're approaching from the third line, right? So we have a low approach and a high approach. Now White will get the corner. So really, this game, we could say it went like that. And then Black decided to approach here, and White decided to ignore it, right? Same. Different order, but that's the same result. That would be the this would be the norm, more normal way to do this. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the other way though. Black's going to attack this stone. This is severe, right? The stone mm -hmm. has to make a choice. Do you want to try to run in the corner? Do you want to run out? Do you want to attack this stone, this stone? If we don't do anything, black's gonna start trying to surround white. So white doesn't like that, so white runs out. Nice. By making this uh, this group stronger, we're also pointing out to Black, hey, this stone is weak and this stone is weak, and you can't play two moves at once, so I'm going to get some initiative on either side. Do I help this stone? Probably move more like that, in which case I'll come over here and attack this. Or do you want to help this stone, in which case I'll attack this. So when your stone's in trouble, running it out you know, isn't a bad idea. We can run it out, make it stronger, and counterattack. Of course, Black decides to ignore again. I would not ignore this move if I were playing this game. I would definitely respond down here. And the reason why I respond is if black plays here, this move is very severe attack. This is this corner. This stone really has to work really hard if it wants to live. And second, even if it does live, white's going to get this ginormous wall just like this. And that means white's going to have influence in all this direction. And that's, that's huge. 
I, I do not like giving my opponent this giant wall that uh, he will then just feed me into for the rest of the game. And he's still in program, he's just going to feed it into this wall and just cram it up against the wall and kill it. So I don't want to give my opponent a wall, I would respond, I would just come out. That's a normal Joseki move here. Uh, but we don't, so this game gets exciting for a while. But comes up here. Oh, no, the phone shut off. Technology. So I responds. Hey, Caitlin. This is a Joseki. Uh, if you don't know it, that's okay. But basically, black is playing a severe move against this move. Normally, we don't want to attach to a weak stone, but white's just, uh, excuse me, black is just trying to make some shape. So white will just try to settle, make a base pretty quickly. Play back. That's Joseki. This move, quasi Joseki, somewhat uh, odd, especially without support over here. If in this shape, there's really two moves. Uh, this move should look very familiar to you. What does this move do? Makes a base. The other option is white can also play this. It looks slower, but it makes sure there's no defect. Um, this is perhaps the more old-fashioned way to do it. This is perhaps the or modern way to do this. Either one is fine though. This one, what is white trying to do here? We could ask white, we could ask Brian. <laughs> Brian, what are you trying to do here? I figured I was gonna play another stone later on to finish off that group. But it's your opponent's move right now. Yeah. Um, Please blame me. Please <laughs> blame them. <laughs> it, it is interesting, I was sort of, to some extent I think I, I was playing as if I, I had given Dan some stones, but actually I hadn't. So okay. I said I, so I was overplaying a little bit. Okay. So just being nice to Dan and see what happens. Seeing what happens. Okay. Uh, I don't know if being nice or being discourteous and sort of overplaying more than, than what I need to do. I see. Yeah, I think Black might just want to try to poke at you a little bit right now and see what kind of shape can happen here. Uh, there are some moves that you know, kind of make your life a little difficult right now. Um, Black might even just consider playing something like this and just say, hey, you know your shape? It's a wreck. Uh, you have to fix. This is probably not so good for Black because uh, White will get to, you're pointing out your shape, the shape defects to your opponents, you're giving your opponent a chance to fix. You probably have to figure out a better way to take advantage of it right now. Uh, let's see if White tries to connect. Uh, black actually has different things black can do. For one thing, uh, we can actually just take the coin. Right, and that's, that's a pretty good sized corner. And over here, white actually has no eyes yet. Black, whoops. Later on, black can actually just come over here. Right, make it a false eye. So, you know, you're playing a little bit of... Uh, you know, fast and loose. That's okay, it's not like you're in big trouble, but you might lose some initiative over here. You play moves like, like this, so. Usually, we won't play this unless we have some other support. Okay. Unless we can, I'll, uh, I'll let it slide. It's, it's all right. Next move, I don't like. Uh, I think it's actually, I mean, I think if you ask a, another good go player, I think they'll say it's fine. The reason why I don't like it is because, again, I think the attention has to be back on this corner. We have this white group. Remember, this was a guppy fish, looking like it's going to get swallowed. White decides to make it a shark. That groups the guppy fish. Black on either side. I think this is more important uh, than it was earlier. So when black plays this, I think white should just go. That's nice. Just don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> Continuing in your dance tradition of just, you know, playing very open, you play the top. I like this one better than this one. Uh, just because, again, we usually think of approaching a 3-4 stone as slightly more valuable than a 4-4 stone. Um, at least in, you know, modern Go, this is usually the bigger side, right, because there's more space on this top than there is over here. Um, but style is on degree two. Uh, black does choose to respond to this, so that's exciting. 
we have someone actually responding to another move that someone else played on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exciting. But this is often, like if you guys were just looking at Shusaku games, right? Shusaku games would often start this way, where you feel like these people are just playing wherever they feel like it. They're actually trying not to have a conversation, they're actually trying not to discuss anything. And to some degree, you guys are mimicking that, at least in terms of your intent and style. I'm not sure if you're doing it as well as Shusaku, but... <laughs> I would venture probably not. Probably not. But, you know, hey, you're, you're carrying on that spirit. That's really cool. All right, now white comes over here. Now we've, we've ignored black's response again. Uh, you guys remember a couple weeks ago, I think I quoted Yu and Yang. You guys remember, like, one against one? Yeah, you can Tanuki, two against one? No Tanuki. No Tanuki. You guys remember the follow-up? Three against one? Probably Always. Six. Always. Yeah, definitely Tanuki. Right, don't play this later. So we have a two against one right here, right? Mm -hmm. So probably shouldn't Tanuki. Or just, and especially with this weakness over here, I think this is asking for trouble. I think, I think black should make white feel a little pain on this top side of the board. Put this here and this two against one over here. So I don't think white has time for that. White well, wants to give some pain, but still play that. It's still huge. Like, still so huge. <laughs> My phone shut off. All right, one more time. Here we go. Uh, black, oops, hey, we've got to move white pincers. Black decides to counter pincer. Black says, hey, you're trying to attack me. I attack you. I like the spirit of this. However, in this case, I think you got to play the you know, make your stone stronger first, just like white did down here. Uh, before you do this. White you know, plays this move. It's relevant, but I did it because I wanted to extend from the upper part. Yeah, you, you feel like you need to make a base over here? Yeah. Here's the thing, because these stones are still really thin, these three stones are a lot stronger than they look. You might think, hey, White can come up, come in here and attack me. It's actually really hard for White to attack you, because you can stick the corner, you can come in here and Make a bunch of Aji for yourself. Uh, you can even just attach, and White has to decide what to do next. And now you have a wall to reattack this stone. Uh, I think you know this is this is a hard part about Go is knowing when you're strong and your opponent's weak. And you can just see all these weaknesses in White's shape, and you can see that you have virtually no weaknesses in your shape. Right, all your stones are connected, so you have to feel a little safer than your opponent. So probably shouldn't worry about this as much as you did. So I think the better answer will be do something like this. Let's play this. Depending on how you feel about this and how much you want it, uh, we could play something like this. Oops, wrong color. And then come here. And now this white stone has to run, and you already have a nice wall to run white into. So you should feel pretty confident about fighting, getting points up here. But that's not how it went. Click there. And here, white jumped out. That wouldn't be my first instinct. What would you guys play here as your first instinct? This looks like a good move, right? We have two white, uh, weak black stones, so white jumps out. I think this is okay, uh, but it wouldn't be my first instinct. Just cap the black? Just what? Just attach to the black stone. Oh wait, black move or white? Black move, black move next. White oh, just jumps okay. out. Why would? What do you think black could do here? Corner. Yeah, probably just go in the corner. It looks like white's making something really big over here. But guess what? Black can just go in and eat those points right now. And these two stones will help invade over here. But remember, these three stones are stronger than they look. So I'm not sure if that's such a great result. Oh, Dan, your phone shuts off every 30 seconds. Black decides to fight. Uh, not even go in the corner, just fight. I think it's playable. I think it's, it's doable. Uh, next move. All right, so white responds. Next move, black Black decides to Tanuki. This is very bad Tanuki for two reasons. First of all, uh, first of all, we have this area heating up. Second of all, we still have this big problem over here that no one has resolved yet who gets to eat the other person. And so it's not really the timing for Tanuki to play someone else altogether. 
And the Tanuki move itself is bad. You don't want to play bad moves. Here's the move. Now here's the question for you guys. Why is this move bad? Oh, well, which corner? All of them. All of them. I can play over here, take that one. I can play over here, take that one. I can even fix this. Well, is attaching to a weak stone for starters? Yeah. yeah, first of all, attaching to a weak stone. There's a go proverb, right? Mm -hmm. What's the go proverb? Don't, don't do that. Don't Sorry. attach to a weak stone. Yeah, don't do that. Now, why, <laughs> Jeff, do you not do that? It makes the weak stone stronger. Yeah. Why? Two against one, right? That means black's winning this. If we just say, it's, 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 it's like, you know, picture two guys, right? They're in an alleyway and it's dark and they're mad at each other, right? And one guy is, you know, big and got maybe a lead pipe or something really just mean and nasty with. And the other guy is just by himself with a sports coat. You know, this isn't going to work. And what you're saying is, you're saying, hey, get out of here. Just, just, yeah, just go over there. And uh, in order to do this, your opponent's going to go, okay. Just, just be, you know, go over there and be happy. We don't want the other person, you know, we don't want the little guy to just be able to run away. We want to do some damage. We want to make him feel some pain. This is really brutal. This is terrible. Incredibly violent feeling today. But go, this is violent, right? Do something mean. Don't let white just go, okay, I'm just going to go over here now and be strong. Also notice, three liberties, three liberties, whose move is next? White. White. Now white's winning this. Don't go. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Wait, are we, are, who are we voting An evil laugh. Who do you want to vote Yeah, who do you want to, well, 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 Dan is the I'm black player and Brian's the white player, so who do you want to win? I don't care. You don't care? <laughs> Kaylin, who do you want to win, Dan or Brian? <laughs> Dan! Brian? All right. You win this, Brian. That's all right. All right. <laughs> all that time you spent with her teaching her go. This is, she doesn't even want you to win. Hmm? After the game didn't end. So. <laughs> so anyway, this is bad for a couple reasons. Do you guys see this? What are you, what are you I don't remember trying to you know, what, what, uh, Dan's black, right? Dan, what are you trying to accomplish here? I, I think I'm trying to change to make sure I get most of the right side. I think that was what was on my head. This, so when you play this move, you're trying to get these two points too. Well, then make more, but make yeah. it. To get on, make well, I mean, I mean, what's the difference between this move and this move? But then he's he is yeah, exactly right. He's not doesn't come out so much. Yeah. Or what if you want the corner? Why not just that? Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I yeah, so this one pretty, pretty bad. So white decides, hey, remember I'm in the alley all by myself. I need some help. I'm just going to run over here. Don't hurt me. <laughs> and blacks go, no, I'm going to hurt you. White plays this move here. I'd be very timid about playing this move. I think it's, I think it's a good direction to play. I think you can play this. Why would I be timid about playing this move as white? What does it leave behind? Ashley? It gives you weak. Yeah. Ashley can spot this weakness a mile away, so you guys only need to look out when you play her. You do stuff like this. <laughs> All right, there's this giant weakness right here. And black, even though black can't play it directly and expect that stone to live, so black just plays here. Um, you guys, this is a common shape. You guys should know the shape. This stone is dead. Didn't know that, Jeff? No. <laughs> Read out. What's the next move for white? How does white kill this? 12-3. 12 12-3? 12 black has to try to save it. If we're assuming that black's not dead. Next move? 2-12, uh, I guess. 12, very good. And black, uh, what's and black Atari? Not well, sure. Sure, why not? Sure, why Who cares? Can black run this way? No. Why not? 15-3. Capturing race, how many liberties does this white group have? Three. How many does the black have? Two. How about this white group? A lot more than two. Five. <laughs> Who wins Good this answer. capturing race? White. White. So black can't cut directly, but it's actually... And that part I remember. That part I gave a very good lecture. 
on, cool. on shapes that will trap a stone on the third line. That's right. So, so black can't play it directly. Yeah. However, here's, here's the, there's a corollary to this. What black plays here? Now where does white have to play? It's capturing right. still. You have two, two. two. Oh, two to two, right? So where does white have to play? 14-2, right? Okay. I, I, this works too. You could play that, but that's... So let's say white plays this. This is better. Black has to play this. Now what? Has to capture. So white killed black. We knew that, right? We knew that stone was going to die. But what did black just get? Corner. Yeah, this is actually starting to look really black right now. And black got an extra move over here. You can fill this one more. So actually, in this case, by sacrificing these two stones, black actually got, can get, if black wants this result, can get actually a pretty decent result, right? Black can still build this wall bigger and take the corner. And that's all in sente. Like, it's black's move next. So black gets the next move, the corner, and a wall. So even though that stone dies, this could be a good sacrifice. This is what makes go hard. Sometimes, you know, you just, uh, even though something doesn't work, it can still be good for you to do it. <laughs> uh, I think I showed some of you guys, maybe it wasn't you guys, it was Tuesday night. Somebody, I showed somebody the Lee Sadol ladder game. You guys ever heard of this? Go to, go to Google and just type in Lee Sadol ladder and it'll just come right up and be like, oh, Lee Sadol ladder game. Very famous uh, game that was played about oh, maybe seven or eight years ago, I can't remember the date, um, when the two guild players actually play a ladder out the entire way of the board. Mm -hmm. Um, because it was actually better for them to just sacrifice the whole thing. <laughs> it's a Have really great example. That, uh, Lee is L E E, Sadol, S E D O L. There's actually a couple different selling, spellings, but that's probably the most common in Korean. So, this is uh, questionable. If, black, if white really wants to defend these stones, we could look at something like this. Uh, we could even look at something like this. Right? You just want to be safe. You don't want black getting all these extra food. You could play something like this. I think that's more dangerous. Um, just take the corner. Hmm. All right, you just get corner. It's okay. Black will get the outside. Again, that weakness is a problem. Uh, oops. But this move is asking for a little bit too much. You're weak over here. You can't ask for a lot. That's probably the key takeaway. All right, black. Still decides, black wants this. So now, hey, we have our attention returned to the right-hand corner, or yeah, bottom right-hand corner. I still think, even though black has played all these moves, black should play here. Or possibly there, but in reality, that's probably, it's tough to say because of this group down here is still, there's still this fight going on too. So lots of fights, right? So we play this way, black is saying, I don't care what happens to my corner, I just want to make, that's, that's my pie. White, of course, now just plays down here. Three against one. Tanuki, don't worry about it. Do it later. If you can do something with the stone, do it later. Don't do it right now. If you try to do it right now, even if you make it live, you will get punished on the outside. White will get something out here. So save it for later when the timing is right, when there aren't so many big moves left on the board. Black plays here. Is this a good move? No, why not, Dan? It doesn't do anything. It doesn't really do anything, and there's other stuff going on. Yeah. Now, it actually does do something. Remember that cut before? It actually makes that cut really uh, worth playing. Because mm. uh, now when this stone gets tarred down and has to come down, you can actually capture this stone in this little miniature ladder here. I'll uh, briefly play it out. This is, why, this is why this stone makes the situation different. White comes down before we had black play this Atari, but now how is black going to play? Um, 12. At the cut. Yeah, at the cut. And check this out. This is a cool little mini ladder. Rup, rup. <laughs> right, so this stone does do something. But again, just like how you were saying to White, you know, you're just gonna, I'm just going to go push you in the correct direction to make yourself stronger. You're encouraging White to 
make yourself stronger. I'm not convinced you get a whole lot from this move. Unless you get all of this, this move is probably not worth it. Uh, so let's go back. So here's the move. The phone shut off, so I don't know what the next move is. Oh no! Black plays this. Or, uh, white, 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 white plays that. Yeah, probably should just do something up here like that. Make, try to make this whole thing more solid, stronger. You can play that or that. Um, you can actually can play that. And then when black cuts, instead of just tarring down, you just extend and fight. So lots of uh, interesting things to do, but this is this is a weakness that needs to be looked after. This move, I do not like this move. Would it be better to play it one line over? Which direction? Towards you. Uh, up there? Because earlier on the top right you were saying it wasn't good to attach the black stone to the white stone. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering would that be the same case same here? Same exact case here, yeah. So I think if you, got, if you want to play something you don't, probably don't want to touch this stone. Uh, black is going to be very unhappy that you played this move. And unfortunately because black is unhappy, guess who he's going to take it out on? All this pent up frustration. Blue. Blue. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blue. Black will do probably something like this. White doesn't want to get cut, so white connects. Black comes over here. Hey, we thought we were trying to trap black in, right? So we got to cut black. Then black will come this way. And maybe black will come this way, and hey, I don't want to get cut here. And then black will just sort of keep coming out. So did you actually prevent black from getting out? No. No, and in fact, not only did black not get out, you made an additional weak group, just for fun. This group only has two liberties. In other words, if you played it too close to black, you shorted yourself some liberties. So often when we're trying to capture our opponent, don't touch them. Just surround them gently from the outside so they suffocate and die. <laughs> Much better. Goes violent, man. <laughs> Alright, so we don't want to touch our opponent. And second, you know, I like uh, Christian's idea of this a little better. This also has a big problem. You want to see what the big problem is with this? You have an elephant tie there. Yeah, what are you going to do if, when. Black comes here. Punch him in the eye. Mm, I don't think it's going to work. It's called an elephant's eye? This shape, yeah. Right here. Okay. You have this diagonal and you play in the middle. I recognize it as bad. Did not have name. Cool. Well, sometimes the shape is actually good for, can be really good for white. Everyone's playing on everyone else's key points, so it's kind of a. It depends. Uh, you have to have a plan here. And I'm not entirely convinced that this is actually a bad play for white. Because white might be able to play things like this and still sort of corral uh, black here. But it looks really dangerous. It depends on how safe and how strong you think this group is. We need to keep this fight going here. So we have these two cutting stones that. Maybe important. So white will, you know, still, I mean, but let's, let's say this. Black can still kind of squirm out. Uh, it all depends on is this group weaker or is this group weaker? Whose move it is. So it's still a fight. White might be able to get these two stones and get a little more compensation for it, though. So I don't know, but this is, if you're going to play that move and leave that just giant area where your opponent can poke through it, you have to have a plan for this. Because this is, this is what's going to happen. If you play that, your opponent's just going to look for it and go, oh, I can run that way. Like, there's one direction your opponent can run. So... What if White played the, the 613, the, the shoulder hit? Shoulder hit here? Yeah. Interesting. Is there too much space between Ooh. them to get out? I think what black will do 
and this, this could vary from player to player, is actually figure out the best way to sacrifice these stones. Maybe something like this. I'm not sure if Black can play this and get something good. Uh, if Black plays here, where does White go? I mean, you want to cut, right? It's hard to know which one to play. If you play the more solid one, Black just goes, oh, I go over there. And so you might be able to eat these two stones. Maybe not, actually, because here's this is also a cool move you guys need to know. Third line stones, white separates. There's this move. It doesn't link up perfectly, but it comes very close. White tries to disconnect. Black is basically cutting through white here, and white gets a stone, but it's low and on the outside, and not even alive yet. So, you know, here's a situation if white plays a move like this, white's committing white to try to capture those stones, and there's a whole bunch of ways that black can still really annoy white. here, we have weakness here, we have weaknesses over here. So, tough to know, but I don't think white will get a great result out of this necessarily. Um, there's always this too. So we can try to force white into some sort of capturing ways between this and this, because there's a cut here. So my answer is, I don't really know, I wouldn't play this though. I would probably look, I would, you know, my, my philosophy, and again, you can get a pro player to correct me on this because it's the stuff that I'll screw up all the time and pro players have to correct me on. My instinct is to make sure these two are strong and to try to, at the same time, see if we can make sure that these are disconnected from friends. But even if they're disconnected from friends, black can just give them up and go in the corner anyway, so it's really well, hard to know what's in the middle of the two blacks. Oh, you want to play that? We've looked at this before, right? Mm -hmm. You guys seen moves? We've, we've been through moves like this. I like this as an idea. It's worth looking at. Once in a while, it'll work. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work here. Okay. Why? What is Black going to do? Yeah. All right, what does White have to do? Go up. Next move for Black. Go after it. Go this way or this way? Or this way? Mm -hmm. Or that way? Mm -hmm. All yeah. I think they're all playable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think is the answer. I like this one. This is the one I'm currently looking at. And the reason why I like it is white has this weakness that's very exposed. White wanted to cut this stone, right? That was your whole point of playing this. Mm -hmm. You wanted to cut this in half. So if white is still committed to that idea. This is train wreck. Three liberties, two liberties, white has to come back and try to capture. And then black just comes over here. White has to find a move that will kill the corner. Uh, here's the thing, there's a lot of things that will kill this. I think he moves like that. No, not quite. White has to come back and play another move, otherwise white will get captured. And black can go play a happy move over here. We'll just make a wall facing this way and eat that stone. Right? These are the types of things that will happen. If you just try to cut your opponent's stones that are mostly connected, you will pay for it. You succeeded, you captured that, you captured that. But what did you give up? Well, yeah, it's looking pretty black now. And you give up that stone, right? So it's worth thinking about, but it's it's often very difficult. Oh, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. I played that one. That was the game. If you guys remember that far back, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, black keeps here. This is terrible. 
Can't beep here. Why can't you beep here? What do we just look at? What do you? What can you do to help these stones? Go under. Go under, right? You can connect. So when you peep here, it's actually funny because you tried this in the game. Now you tried to connect. <laughs> what did you find out? It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work now because now you can't cut through this. You tried. I'll give you that. All right, there's not too many more moves in this recorded game that we will finish it up. So White just gets a free stone and looks like kills that very strong. Black did get a little bit of a wall here, but some sad news for Black. White's so strong here that White can just say, oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's go, hey Black, you want to live or you want to die? What are you in the mood for? And if Black wants to run, White's so strong, White doesn't have to worry. White can just go over here, hey, remember that group? Let's annoy that group too. And this group not looking very safe, splitting attack. If Black just tries to come underneath something like this, that's fine. White can be happy to just reduce and annoy. So this isn't really a good, a strong enough shape. These stones are too far apart. White can still come in here and make fun of Black's shape. All right, next move. So Black's living on this board. We still have this big cut over here. We still don't know exactly what this stone can be used for. It can still be used. We can still do some annoying moves with this stone and try to make it live. Uh, what does white look like white's getting? The top. All right, so this is looks kind of whitish. However, I would say this is absolutely un under no uncertain terms. This is not white territory at all. Why? Is it? Yeah, there's weaknesses, big weaknesses. We can, we can reduce that, no problem. <laughs> white shouldn't get anything there. White has defects. And this is why you have to, in your own game, you have to look at the board and go, okay, white has a bunch of weaknesses there. <laughs> Nothing. All right, so where are white's points? Um, yeah, they're all at the bottom. And if white gets all of it, that's pretty big. That looks like it's 25 points. If white gets it, white has, doesn't have it yet, but it does. <laughs> If white does get all this, now there's still some Aji here in the corner. It actually lost a lot of Aji after that stone, though. Um, there still might be something in here, but if white gets all this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, times one, two, three, four, five, five times seven, actually? What? <laughs> 35. 35, right? So we're looking at 35 points for white. Maybe there's more white over here, right? So white could easily get, you know, 60, 70 points just on the bottom if we don't do anything. Dan knows this. He's, he's been calculating the game position all along. He decides, you know what? We're going to prevent White from getting all those points with that move. I like the idea. This is showing positional judgment. You're thinking, hey, I can't let White get all that. That's scary. That's too much. However, this isn't a good enough move to do it. I, I, I just couldn't figure out, given my skill level, how to go in more. Mm -hmm. so. Well, check this move out. This is really annoying. White thought White was getting 20 points over here. If Black plays this move, White's not so sure. If White wants to make this, you know, take away Black's base. Just link up these stones. That makes White sad. So White has to play a move over here. And then if White has to play a move over here, guess what you get to do? Boom. Why would he not make a three to three space jump there? Uh, just just run move back. Oh here? Yeah. And here for black? Ooh, you like trouble. <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> I just want to know why not. Okay. That's valid. That's when we, when we make a base in the third line, where do we have to play? Right. Two spaces. Some this is the reason why. Because your opponent can just do this and just split us. So that's that's hard. That's going to make our life very difficult. So we want to be safe here. If you do want to play something that's a little more, shall we say, risque, <laughs> go do something like that. If you're going to play far, play more far. Because now you're forcing white. Do you want to give white, you know, force white to come and attack you here somehow? I'm not exactly sure how. Uh, and possibly give up your corner. 
right? So this move helps the corner a lot. Uh, any of these moves, we can just crawl in slowly or try to go in quickly, make a co or something like that with that move. Uh, this is asking white. Hey, you know all those points you thought you were going to get? Which ones do you really want again? Because I forgot. And if white wants the corner, you go, great! That's a really nice looking base. If white wants to separate you, you go, okay, let's remember those points in the corner? Let's talk about those again. These are moves that, you know, just make your opponent just kind of pissed at you underneath, you know, just, you're just going, oh, damn it. Just, ah. I don't know what to do. Which side do I play? So, but this is Haji, right? The stone is not dead yet. Three against one, always Tanuki. Or not always, but should Tanuki, right? Well, hey, we can still use that stone. Even if we want to give it up. So, what you did this, that's. Here's what is nice about this move. You are commended for this reason. When you're thinking of reducing, do you guys remember when we talked about reductions? When your opponent has a giant thing that looks like it's territory, where can you reduce? How far can you go in? At the line, right? Find the line of their territory and just play around that line, just annoy them. So that's possible. <laughs> but there are better moves because you have these weaknesses still available to you. All right, this move. Wait, put the black stone there. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> right. This next move, I think this move succeeded in, in confusing your opponent. Because. <laughs> Brian, like this. Yeah. You're, learning, you're learning, you're all learning a new Go proverb. It's one that I made up. <laughs> That's a good one. It's called Tengen. It's always wrong. This move, this middle point, is called Tengen. Always wrong. No matter when you play it, it's wrong. <laughs> it's not that it's always, always wrong. It's just that anybody who's not at least one dong will play this at bad and appropriate times. Like, you'd just be tempted. You'd be like, hey, go is symmetric. It's like symmetrical, right? It's like mathematical. Therefore, the middle point has to be the best point. Do you think you're a genius? <clears throat> I know I'm a genius. Press your nose. That's why I lose so much. But I, I wrote, Nick, my defense is I learned Go from a guy named Paul Tangent. So <laughs> I, I have special uh, dispensation. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll allow it this time. Uh, this move, I think Brian's trying to do too much. I'm not really sure what you're trying to do with this stone. It doesn't have any immediate friends other than these. It's not really severely attacking this. You're not really threatening a strong invasion yet over here. This will help an invasion, but it's not really strong enough to feel like you're threatening something. I, I think it, it was. it could run in enough directions what, you're just trying to put stones on the board that can run? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, my worst, my worst nightmare would be that Dan somehow got that whole center band in. Okay. And I figured if I dropped a stone in there, I could later figure out how to, to um, run into some, some group to, you know, to make it, not to make it my territory, but to keep it from being hit. I see. Yeah. I'm going to say two things, I think, to this, what you think. Okay. This is a really good point in the game where you have to use positional judgment. And professional players and strong goal players are really, really good at being able to decide, you know, okay, I can, I can afford to give my opponent these points, these are the points I can't afford to give them, or, or you know, making judgments based on what's the biggest area. Uh, I don't think you need to reduce here yet. I don't think uh, that's necessary. Partially just because blacks still have major weaknesses. And as long as your opponent has weaknesses, they can't make points there, right? White has a really hard time, or is going to have a really hard time making points up here because of these weaknesses. And uh, likewise, black still has weaknesses over here. There's a big weakness over here. Um, if I were looking at this game and I were the white player, I would say, okay, my opponent can take these points whenever they want to, but it costs them a move. Basically, they're going to have to play a move that I'm not going to respond to. Until they do that, those points are nothing. That's worth zero points. So I would look at this and go, okay, this looks scary, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, maybe 15 points or so, maybe up to 20 if they get really greedy about it. Because either one of us can take those points, those are only worth half a point each. So this, seven points. That's how much black is going to make there. You guys follow that math? Like we don't know who's gonna play there. If I play there, they're worth basically nothing. 
or even probably there is probably even a little bit stronger. If black plays there, they're worth 15. Therefore, divided by two, two players, seven points. It's really small. Down here, this is, you know, that's true. You do have to worry about this at some point. However, if you're willing to give the corner back, you always have to move. If at any point this gets bigger than this, you just play this. And black won't want you to connect underneath. So black might try to play something like that. And you just going to make a base. <laughs> probably actually have to jump out. You still get attacked here. There's so many black stones that I'm still, still worry. It's kind of uh, probably that. But either way, you still got an extra free movement here, right? If black doesn't come and take away your base, and that you're okay with because you can still just run out and make shape or do all sorts of things. If black tries to attack, you will now make a base. Now this is looking strong enough. So positional judgment is the idea. Is, is how worried do you really have to be? And I think when you're playing this move, you're thinking, well, this move gets me points or it helps me everywhere. But that's not. You don't really need a little bit everywhere. You need just to be decisive about what you need and what you don't need. Uh, just a couple more moves. Black plays there. Black decides black likes this. And again, that's another reason to not play the stone, right? You're probably pretty sad when black plays here. You're thinking, oh my gosh, my worst fear is becoming true. There's still weaknesses. There's still problems in here. It's probably better just to come up here and do something like this. You know, just force black to do this. And then you can play, you know, something that attacks the stone or do something like that. And then you don't have to worry about this getting too big because you already have these reducing moves. But when you play here and black plays here, this is still invadable. This isn't a great move for black either, but black's not unhappy. We have this oh, sixth line. This move, you're trying to help out your friend. Does it make any points? A little on the margin. Sure about those weaknesses, that. Those are all better moves. Because your opponent can't take advantage of your weakness anymore. Often, if you're, if you're thinking of a move that will try to do two things at once a little bit, it's often better if you just do one of them well. Like doing one thing well is often better than doing two things a little bit. 